When you think of formidable predators in the bird world, what comes to mind first? Eagles, hawks, falcons, and other raptors are most likely the answers brought up by the general population. However, these birds of prey have dramatic traits, such as large size and talons, specifically meant to aid in hunting other creatures. What if I were to tell you there's a songbird that can barely reach 9 inches in height with the same habits as these raptors? Known as the loggerhead shrike, some of you may know of this bird's predatory behaviors, but that barely scratches the surface of what this bird can do. Today, I'll be telling you 10 facts you probably didn't know about the loggerhead shrike. If you find yourself enjoying the video, make sure to like and subscribe. But without further ado, let's get right to it. Lacking a raptor's talons, loggerhead shrikes skewer their kills on thorns or barbed wire, or wedge them into tight places for easy eating. This tendency is why they're nicknamed the butcher bird, and are the only known predatory songbird. Loggerhead shrikes catch and kill a wide variety of prey, including grasshoppers, crickets, beetles, lizards, mice, frogs, and small birds that can often be as big as they are. One was once observed carrying off a northern cardinal after what was described to be a noisy struggle lasting less than a minute, by which time the cardinal was dead. The tomium, which is the upper cutting edge of the loggerhead shrike's hooked bill, features a pair of built-in pointy projections aptly named tomial teeth. Like a falcon, the shrike tackles vertebrae prey with a precise attack to the nape, probably using the tomial teeth to paralyze the animal with a jab to the spinal cord. Loggerhead shrikes impale noxious prey such as monarch butterflies and eastern narrow-mouthed toads, then wait for up to three days to eat them, which allows time for the poisons to break down. These shrikes also eat the heads and abdomens of toxic lubber grasshoppers, discarding the insect's poisonous thorax. Newly fledged loggerhead shrikes perform exaggerated, misdirected versions of adult hunting behavior. They peck out inanimate objects, fly about with leaves or sticks in their beaks, practice aerial chases without a target, or chase after their parents. They also perform rudimentary impaling gestures, grasping objects in the tips of their bill and repeatedly touching them to a branch or perch as if trying to get them to stick. Insects are cold-blooded, and their metabolism and activity is greatly influenced by the temperature of their bodies, which temperature is almost entirely dependent on that of the surrounding environment. A low temperature inhibits activity, and a higher temperature usually stimulates the animal. Because of this, loggerhead shrikes sometimes go hunting on cold mornings when insect prey are immobilized by low temperatures. The word loggerhead, a synonym for blockhead, refers to the unusually large size of this bird's head in relation to its body. This could be because of the strength needed by the loggerhead shrike to carry such large prey. Loggerhead shrikes hunt by scanning the ground from elevated perches, then pouncing onto their prey. They also hover hunt, like a kestrel, and even hunt on the ground, flashing their wing patches to startle prey out of hiding. Loggerhead shrikes have a characteristic behavior when flying from perch to perch, starting high, then flying low to the ground, then up again to a high perch. Because of the white patches in the shrike's wings, they are sometimes confused with northern mockingbirds. Since the loggerhead shrike is an endangered species with very specific hunting patterns, this means that any area in which a loggerhead is found to reside is instantly zoned for its protection, even if it's a residential area. Such a zoning occurred in 1993 in a suburb of Los Angeles. Well, there you have it, everyone. Those are 10 facts about the loggerhead shrike. So, quick little story before I end off the video. When I first heard about the loggerhead shrike as a kid, I thought it was called a longerhead shrike. So, whenever I looked them up a couple years ago and saw that they were spelled with two G's instead of N-G, 
I thought that was so weird. And not only that, I also called it a lodger head strike from that point on until I literally learned halfway through this video that it's instead pronounced logger, which makes more sense. Also, yes, I decided to start over my voice recordings and correctly say it throughout the whole video. Oh, that took so long. Uh, but yeah, moral of the story is I can kind of be dumb sometimes, but hey, in the end, I learn. But yeah, anyways, thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed. As always, I'll see you in the next video, and I hope you have a wonderful week.